Despite the intercom not working, John Nganga and Peter Jugona were placed just outside the top 10. In service, they changed the front right shock and are seen here driving on it after it gave way again. Not far up the road, the strut collapsed completely. We, we hit a rock and we lost the camber. Then after that, now when we were, we were doing around 180 into that corner, we hit a rat and it broke the mountain. That was it. Receiving the award for the most improved crew of 2011 was Sandip Jandu and Gurdjik Mahangra. They were now sporting number 9 on the door of their repainted N10, but were setting times that were off the usual mark. Sandeep was feeling as green as the car and was uncomfortable with having a standard gearbox. But even at this speed, they still came an impressive 10th overall. Actually, I'm not feeling very well today. I've been just driving at maybe 40% and then we have got this different gearbox this time. Driving on a standard six-speed gearbox and we are just getting confused with gears now and then, giving us a lot of problems. At the end of each loop, and just before service, the crews once again tackled the stadium spectator stage. With the rally running behind schedule, stage 14 was cancelled, and as Baldev Chag and Raju Semi left service for the final loop, there were now only three stages remaining. The stages were all repeats, and with the notes having been tweaked, the pace was expected to be even quicker. Push, long pass right. There were a few changes to the leaderboard, but most affected were Jesse Chate and Gurdjieff Panessa who punctured, and the time loss dropped them four places to 11. There were 2 and 12 taking part, and both were in the top 10, with John Smith and Bob Kahugi taking theirs to 9th after what had been a good solid drive. Most were in time vacuums that only required them to maintain the pace to secure their positions, including Manvir Baryan and Shamir Yusuf who claimed 8th. Onkar Rai and Raju Chaga gave one last push, but it was impossible to gain on the car ahead, and although they recovered 14 seconds, they finished 7th. <laughs> Hardip Resi and Ravi Sony were only too aware Onkar Rai was closing in from behind, but they kept tabs on his times and gauged their pace to stay ahead, and remained in 6th. Azar Anwar and Julius Gigu were entrenched in fifth and with no chance of improving, just matched their earlier times. Happy that they got what they could out of the Evo 8. At the beginning of the final three stages, Badr Chaga and Raju Semi knew that the 48 seconds they had on Alistair Kavanagh would come under threat. Despite driving at max, they lost to him on each stage. The gap closed to 12 seconds at the beginning of the last section, but in their rush to stay ahead, they squashed the exhaust on a rock, and the loss of power put them behind by 20 seconds, and they had to accept four. We were trying, and uh, we knew, okay, Alistair had a puncher, and we were still lying third, and we said, okay, we need to push a little bit, and we did push through the first two stages in the last loop. Pushed in the, the very last stage as well, until the exhaust got squished, and we still pushed as hard as we could with the squished exhaust. Having lost three minutes earlier with the puncture, Alistair Cavan and Gavin Lawrence were driving for stage wins to make up the time. They were fastest through stages 11 and 12, and overtaking Chaga on the final stage to claim third was icing on the cake. You must have been pushing to draw back that time, Al. Uh, well, we were on the first two, uh, three, and then the last one, the car was getting a bit hot, so we backed off a bit. But, um went it over a bridge and managed to hit the bank which kept us on the road otherwise we'd have been off down into the river but uh, 
Ian Duncan and Amos Lutch were in such a huge vacuum that they were not under threat and only needed to maintain their pace. They set times within the top three on each stage to take second. This is a great way to defend your championship. Yeah, exactly. It's a good start. Last year we were third on the first rally, this year we're second, so we're even better than last year. <laughs> Carl Tundo and Tim Jessup had held the lead right from the start, marginally opening the gap on each stage. They had flowed through the sections, not taking any risks, accurately reading the road, and after five stage wins, they had started the year out in front. I think, I think we had an advantage starting to like uh, fourth or fifth on the road because it was definitely a rally of a lot of loose gravel and um, the guys at the front had to clean the lines. So you must feel really chuffed. Yeah, I'm very happy, yeah. No, it's a good start. Carl Tundu and Tim Jessup eventually won by well over a minute from Ian Duncan, but this would have been different had Kavanagh not punctured. Isa Amwari was the highest placed Group S contender in 12th, and Jonathan Soman the fastest classic in 14th. With all the cars doing the whole route, the final results included the two-wheel drives, with Leonardo Varesi taking the top place in 22nd. 34 cars finished with Charles Hinga well out of place in 29th, and Victor Kundi in a Toyota Vitz taking last place, 38 minutes behind. On the championship board, Carl Tundo opened the standings at the top, but with seven rounds to go, it already promises to be an exciting season ahead.